Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Canosa by One Day West Games. It plays two sirens, takes 20 minutes to play, and is for ages 8 and up. And in the game, you'll be playing as two rival sirens, attempting to gather lost sailors at sea and bringing them onto your respective islands. You'll be utilizing this abstract game by moving around your siren, such as a king would be in chess, and of course, sailors uh, that are controlled by you. And you'll be utilizing your siren's song by taking pieces off of your siren and placing them on two other sailors that do not have your specific ring on top. And there's a certain number of these rings that can go on top of each of the different sailors. And then your objective is to move them into your designated area on the board. There are two main areas on the game board where your sirens are currently located to start the game, and that is where you'll need to place your sailors in order to win. If you can get four sailors onto that space before the other player, you can win the game. And the other way you can win the game is if your opponent can't make any moves. So if you make your moves and it's your opponent's turn and they can't do anything, you can also win the game of Canosa. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. An abstract game with some strategy. Let's go ahead and take a look as to how to set the game up and then of course how to play and finally my review. To begin setup for the game Canosa, go ahead and take out the box and place it in the middle of the table. Then take the board and place it on top of the box where you will be placing your pawns and sirens. Take each of the main sailor pawns and place them in the middle of the board in the diagonal areas that have the dots representing the colors of the different sirens. Then take the respective sirens and place them on their respective colors, along with their siren tokens on top of them, two for each of the sirens. Then give one of each of the rings to each of the sailors of the specific color designated by the dot underneath. There should be a gold and there should be a silver indicator to determine which of the rings go on which of the sailors then you're pretty much ready to play the game. It's that simple. Playing the game Canosa is almost as simple as setting it up. In the game, you're going to be getting an action if it's the first turn of the game, or two actions in any subsequent turn. On your turn, you'll have different actions you can take. Action one is you can move your siren. Sirens move like a king in chess, meaning they can go up, down, left, or right, or diagonal. Another option is you can move a pawn that is controlled by your specific ring of your siren. So any pawn that has a gold ring that is on top of it is going to be able to be controlled by the gold player and thusly moved by that player. And they can always move uh, in the direction closest, uh, that the pushes them towards the island that they are assigned to. So if it is a gold pawn, they can move down or they can move right. And if it is a silver pawn, they can move down or they can move left. And basically you're trying to get these pawns to the spaces where your sirens start the game on. Another action you can take in the game is if you have a siren that is adjacent to a pawn, you can take one of the rings off of your siren and place it onto a pawn, thusly allowing you to control that specific pawn as long as your ring remains on top. You may never have more than three rings on a pawn or on your siren at any given point in the game. Another option in the game is you can take a ring off of a pawn, as long as it's the top one, and place it on yours as long as, of course, the ring is your color, thus allowing you to utilize your siren songs on other sailors. When you get one of your pawns over to your space of or your island, you will then be able to take off the rings of the pawn, score the pawn as a victory point, and place back one ring for each of the sirens onto that siren. So if for instance you had a gold and a silver ring, you would go ahead and place one silver and one gold on each of the sirens. Any additional rings will go away. If there's only one ring, then you'll place it on the siren that gets the ring. Remember the rules of only having a certain number of rings on the sirens, and never more than one is going to come back for each siren whenever a victory point is scored. Your objective in the game is very simple. You want to get four pawns controlled by your siren over to your side of the game board. And as soon as that happens, you win the game. Now, of course, there is another way that the game can end, and that is if you make your actions, and then your opponent goes to make their actions, and they cannot make actions, they can't move pieces. If that happens, the game is over, and the player who most recently moved is the winner of the game, Canosa. It's rather simple, rather uh, straightforward, with quite a bit of strategy. Let's go ahead and talk about any of the nuances and how to win the game, or uh, what I thought of the game, in this next portion. So Canosa is an abstract strategy game. Uh, it's similar to games like checkers and like chess, Partigi, Partigi, Parcheesi? 
Baccarat, those kind of things. Now, it does have a theme attached to it, and you do feel the theme come out in the game, whereas you are moving your siren around the game board, and then you're going to be placing your rings on certain uh, pawns, and then you're gonna be moving those pawns onto the space that is your island. And those pawns represented as sailors, your siren is represented as a siren, and uh, you are, of course, utilizing your siren call to beckon them towards your island for uh, whatever purpose. Maybe it's to save them, or, or maybe not. I guess it just depends on uh, how you read the lore for sirens. Uh, but regardless, the game is all about strategy. How you move your siren, where you choose to move it, where you choose to place your rings, and how you choose to move your pawns. And as you can see at the very beginning of the game, everything is blocked off. And you have to kind of start making room for other players and their pawns to move to the locations that you need them to go to and also of course if you can try and block them maybe you're going to want to utilize your siren and stop players from continuing to move one of the pawns because it will get closer and closer to your opponent's island your objective is always to be first and it's kind of a race in this game you're trying to race your pawns to the side of the board and use your siren to control the winner of the race uh, of course, there's other little uh, unique tr uh, tricks to the game as well. Now, I've said there's only three rings you can ever have on a pawn at any given point in time. If you have secured that pawn, because the only way that a pawn with three is ever going to not be in control of the person who has the top ring is if they take off one of the rings, uh, they are going to basically have that power to move that pawn back to the space. But remember, when removing rings from a given pawn, you're only going to get one of each color back to each of the sirens, and the other rings will go away, meaning you'll lose control for having too much control over one of the sailors. And it might always be to your benefit to remove a ring provided you know that you can get your pawn across the board and you're not going to be in danger of having it beckoned by the other siren. And uh, that's basically the stylization of the game. It's got a medium to lightweight style. In fact, I would even say more on the lighter end of things, but the strategy is what kind of pushes it over. Trapping your opponent, the unique moves and uh, choices you can make in the game to prevent your opponents from gathering their sailors and moving them to the spaces on the board that represent their island can be tricky and you can utilize some tricky tactics as well. Securing your space by blocking off borders, protecting your sailors, and keeping your other opponent's siren at bay is really really useful in this game. It's uh, pretty straightforward as far as replayability goes, it's similar to other games. I would put this more in the line of like a more abstract, not more abstract, a more stylized and uh, strategically inclined style of checkers. And also, of course, if you like mermaids, if you like the siren theme, it really does work, especially for the style of game that this is. Now, of course, my wife loves this game because she loves mermaids, she made Moonshell, and uh, this kind of ties into that mermaid theme, but the siren's a little bit more uh, ominous and like mystical, and you never know what they're trying to do to the sailors. Are, you, are they becking them in to kind of like control them, or, uh, you know, some of the lore is a little bit darker, and others is nicer. Are we talking about Little Mermaid sirens, or are we talking about something else here? I don't know, but I do enjoy that theme of the game and it does fit really well with beckoning and moving your pawns to get to the locations they need to be in. Overall, I really enjoy the strategy of the game, the depth of the game, and the choices you can make. But at its core, it is an abstract strategy game that involves you controlling the positions, utilizing your siren to protect other pieces, and then of course pushing your pieces to get to the side of the board of your choosing in order to score points to win the game, and trying to utilize your siren call rings as a resource to the best possible advantage you can have. If you're interested in abstract games, this is a solid choice. If you want something that's a little bit more in depth, a little bit more thematic than something like checkers or chess or go, this is another option as well that you should definitely take a look at. If you're not a fan of abstract games, you want something with more in-depth theme, maybe this is something you might want to pass on, especially because it is definitely an abstract game at its heart. And also, of course, if you can get frustrated easily, this might not be for you as well, because there are certain times in the game where things are not going to go as you plan because the sirens control a lot of how the game is utilized and, of course, how pawns are blocking your other pawns. And if you run out of resources, you might not be able to want to do what you want to do. And you have to really think on the fly and maybe take a couple turns uh, ahead of time in your head as to what you want to do, provided everything goes as planned. But never, never things go as planned in these type of games. For you Santorini lovers and, and those type of players, this is one I would strongly suggest you take a look at. I really enjoyed this game. I'm looking forward to see what the game finally looks like at the end. I know this is
this is not going to be most likely the final release of the game. I'd like to see how they place the board on top here. I really did enjoy the fact that it was kind of layered and it gave you kind of more of a, it feels better to play it on this style. So hopefully they keep this design so you can play it on, on the box itself. It, it does have some similarities to games I really enjoy. Regardless though, if you're interested in taking a look at Canosa, you should definitely go ahead and check out the link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game. Beautiful artwork, great stylization pieces are really, really nice. High quality pieces and quite a lot of strategy for an abstract game with such a simple uh, concept, such a simple setup and simple rules. Yes, I recommend this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Canosa by One Day West Games. If you're interested in picking up the game, go ahead and check the link in the description like I said before. And if you'd like, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos just like this one. And in fact, you'll probably see a stream of this one next week. I'd probably like to show you guys what the game looks like and how it plays for those of you who like abstract games. This is definitely one of those games for abstract players to take a look at because it has a lot going for it. And it's, it's probably one of my favorites, especially of this year. Uh, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it that much. I really like the quality of the pieces, as well as checking out our uh, website and of course our Patreon. Thank you, Patreon members. For those of you looking for a Moonshell, the deluxe version of the game is being finished. It should be done by in the next six or seven days, roughly. And then we'll start shipping that out to the distributor and the distributor will push those out. And for those of you who just have the base game and the pins, those should be coming out within the next week uh, from the distributor. So everything is really, really close. And uh, it's also got the theme of mermaids, which is, is pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to gathering your sailors and bringing them to my island with my siren call next time. Attempting to gather lost sailors in uh, games. The game plays up to two, no, not up to two rivaling, rival, rival, rivaling, rivalry sirens. Attempting to gather lost sailors in sea. Uh, <clears throat>